go to school. Wise work from home. Man has no place to hide. A hero is born to build his sanctuary. What's up guys? I hope you enjoyed that. I was just trying to add some extra flavor and passion to this because a lot of this stuff really, as a joke, really is a sanctuary for me. And I'll get into this shop, um, ultimate freedom to do whatever you want, how you want. So big new push to generate the, the square footage you already have into being multi-purpose. Um, whether it's an in-house office, in-house workspace, um, doing a lot of things yourself because everywhere else it's backed up so you're learning to be a little more self-reliant. So shop designs are kind of what we've mastered. I have three really good designs that I wanna share. This one's not new. You guys have seen this in all the videos but you guys don't really know the build process. So that's kind of what we're gonna go over today. So I'm gonna talk about from the base floor up and I'm gonna go into all the functionality. I'm gonna go into the um, organization and cleanliness, what I would do differently or what I liked about it. And I'm gonna go into also the conversion of it being a paint booth. That's something a lot of people don't think about, but whatever you're doing, there's most likely some form of a mess. So whether it's physical hand paint, uh, screen printing, you're actually rattle can or air spray, whatever it is, there's some form of finishing the work you're doing. And you want to make sure that you can convert whatever space to dual purpose. So in this shop, it was a really complete package. And I think we're going to hit a lot of points that hopefully help you guys out greatly. I have some basic pros and cons. So the obvious pro is that this is custom. So you are building everything to the exact function of your needs and you can optimize every square footage. I love the analogy of a tiny house because those things are so clever with everything has three uses, right? So you might have to be that kind of mindset depending on how much square footage you have. So custom fit to your needs, you could build it yourself for cheaper so that you could pick and choose the materials you want. For example, this was primarily two by four and my three quarter particle board and half inch particle board. So I did three quarter on all the base and then I did half inch on everything upper for to be a little more light duty. And then for the walls and door faces, those are all half inch as well. Now you can buy, I'll probably, yeah, I'll, I'll add a note to the end of this video, maybe pricing some things out, but I know wood and everything's inflated crazy. Uh, in this day and age, so I'll try to go off of what current market value is for this and give you an estimate what this would cost you. Cons though, is you kind of have to know how to do this stuff. <laughs> if you're gonna build a custom garage, you have to have the skills and you have to have the tools. If you have to pay someone to do it, it might not be beneficial. You might actually be more uh, apt to do my third garage design, which is pretty fat, because at least then you could take it with you. But if you have the skills, whether you have a spouse or a really good friend and you can do this, I would say go for it because you're building this essence of pride. You're building this essence of like natural networking. What worked really well for me is when I was working, I always had the garage open for airflow and hanging out, but there'd be people walking their dog or just hanging around, checking the mail. And it was just conversational. Hey, what are you doing today? Oh, that's really cool. Could you make me one? Or I have a friend who would like this. So when you build your own shop, you have this sense of street cred automatically because you didn't go and buy this, you're showing off your skills. So the other con would be that if you're really busy, you might need something functional now. Your business is growing, you're having orders come in, and you might not have a month or two to build your shop. So that would be a big con and it's also a very messy process so say you're sharing the shop you have computers and stuff but you also need to start building it might not be a great idea to have all that sawdust in your space um, the other con is that you can't take it with you so all that love you're pouring into this shop 
it's kind of like you're rebuilding it wherever you go from here on out. The flip side of that is a pro, and that's going to be the idea that if you do this well, you're going to recuperate and more all the money you're investing into it because this kind of stuff is a huge, like, I don't want to call it an asset, so to speak, but it is a little equity boost in your house. So when you have a garage that's decked out, you're going to attract better attention, especially if you do it really well. So that's kind of a pro and then the car you can't take it with you. Um, this whole garage set, I love it to death. Would I do it again today? Probably not because I'm in a different place in life, but we'll get into the conclusion at the end of the video. I hope you guys just keep an open mind and if this is where you're at, then I hope that you just get so many good ideas from this. So let's start this little photo reel. So I think stage one, yeah, we're gonna go into the, the base cabs. So this is my setup beforehand. So two by fours running across and then you're gonna add little shims on the bottom. So, sorry, all the garage floors slope down, so you're gonna to have to shim that up to make them all perfectly level. And then from there, you're standing two by fours up. These will be your theoretical walls. And then, that's simple. I'm using pocket holes for this, just pocket hole with glue. And I'll use the three quarter particle board. Those will be my dividing shelves. Um, and then from there, you're just making doors. It's really easy peasy. Um, you need to analyze what tools you want. Shop vac, air compressor, trash can, table saw, miter saw, all of those things you have to pre-think about and designate square footage for that. So I would recommend, if you don't know SketchUp, you should definitely learn it. It's a great tool. Other than that, just use a basic gridded paper and then your squares would be a one foot section and map things out in that regard so that way you know exactly what you need. And I do want to pay attention or note that these base cabinets are taller than normal. I believe they're 42 inches, I think. And it's I'm six foot three. And that's I wanted something that I'm comfortable, like my arms were in this motion more or less at the time. I didn't really want to be working like that. So the pro to building a custom is you can kind of gear it to that. Um, the shop back stuff. I know it's kind of jaw jacking in the beginning, but the, there's piping that goes off through and I have these waste gate valves. So these are these little plastic valves that open and close. Each appliance has its own valve. So theoretically, when all they're, or they're all closed, you open up the one you want. So you have the max vacuum pressure to that thing. And I have this on a switch that just turns the shop back on and off. So wherever I'm at, I can access it. The newer stuff, is all remote. Like, don't even waste your time with this. You can go buy those wireless remotes for 20 bucks or something, and then you plug in your shop back to that, and then you can just turn it on with your ads. The way to go. My table in this garage folds up and down, and that was very, very critical. There's a lot of times where I'm building, or once I get everything prepped and cut, and I'm building something massive, whether it's an entertainment center piece, a desk, uh, island. I'm gonna need assembly space. So everything moving back out and against the wall created this environment for me to assemble and also created an environment for me for, to like store um, like the trailer and things of that sort. Um, what else? This, oh, let's go into the flooring. Right now, I left this raw. I probably would just epoxy that, something you should just do up front. I <laughs> spilled so much stain and so much epoxy on that that it just became this like epic tattooed artwork of all my messy projects and it was cool, but I would say just box it. So here we're going into the wall cabinet side, so phase two. This is again half inch part of the board and I would cut out two inch strips, attach the strip to the wall and then the plywood itself lays in place and then I would tack it to that strip and build my box around it fast, effective and cheap and strong. Once this is all nailed and glued together, then I would come back and screw it to the studs. So I had several hundred pounds in these things, no issues. And then the doors were just straight half inch part of the board. You buy all the hardware in bulk, handles in bulk, so you get the contractor pack. Um, that was my amazing view. Trees, luscious grass. Like when I say sanctuary oasis, this was a place where I didn't have to worry about the mess. A place where I had natural green, 
fresh air, lighting. It was really a cool place just to, whatever I was thinking of, making that come to life. So in that regard, this was the best shop for that design. This new shop is too pretty for me to want to get dirty, so I don't have that same kind of freedom. Um, so I'm just going into Denny's journey. I had my charging stuff behind doors to keep them out of the dust, um, and then eventually you'll see the TV there. But think about what you want to store up top. I picked stuff that I don't grab all the time because I like the idea of more of my stuffing on the base. Um, so the, up top of the cabinets up here were supplies I'd use once in a while. But that's neither here nor there. Showing off the remote fans, that was a cool little thing. And then I go into some other ideas later on. And you can see that this is as basic as can be. I'm not wasting wood making a back cabinet or making the back of the cabinet. So each side shares to the next cabinet. So I'm only using one piece of wood like that. So that way I'm not wasting resources, right? So I'm trying to be as effective as possible. And then I added airline, that's all the pneumatic gear, and then in sync with the compressor. And then I did add some cheap bed foam and that's gonna help absorb the sound. So it's kind of funny how I talk with my hands all the time. Um, you can see the shot back PVC pipe, the storage, and then little air vents so that it could breathe, it could breathe air in. Uh, what, what else, what are we talking about here? Oh, our storage system. You're gonna have scrap wood. You're gonna need a place for that. Obviously above the cabinets, I was able to store some things above the cabinets like a baseboard trim, crown molding, long trim. This back section was actually able to fit a four foot by eight foot sheet of wood. I could fit up to six. And then my front section was I think it was a foot deep by three foot or four foot wide. And of course then vertical storage here. So the first half I actually installed it at an angle due to my garage door. And I'm gonna illustrate it here with the old little broomstick. But you kind of come in at an angle and then straighten her out and then that's how you could fit the big sheets in there. It was really nice and easy. I actually had some wood dollies. So once I got the four by sheet, four by eight sheet down, put it on the dolly, and I just rolled it in and then pushed it into place. It was uh, really easy. All right, and then outside of this storage, let's see, I think I go into me hanging stuff up on the wall just to get it out of the way. I eventually put my stands for my table saw right here, those little guys. Um, and then I think I get into the third stage. Now pay attention. Doesn't that just, look at this guy. This is why people, when you put a TV in your garage, you're guaranteed happy employment. That's what happens here. We all think that you're gonna lose productivity. Does this guy look like he's losing productivity? Look at that young chap. Table, work cart, building stuff out. Everything's looking all pretty. Got this behind a door. And I'm going into now, oh, this is gonna be filtration. You can get filtration for your, your shop. You can buy those little boxes, like a fan that your, your uh, filtration goes into and you can kind of take some airborne dust. I just took a customizable air filter that you could wash off and I custom fit it to fit behind the fans. That way I could let it run for the week and then take them off, hose them off, let them dry, put them back, reusable, and it helps keep the shop clean. I actually show in the, towards the end of the video on the paint booth aspect, me blowing the fans clean. You could just see how much dust is clung to that. So having filters in the back is really important. And then I go into the 220 outlet I put, and this was the idea of in case I wanted to get a big welder, because there was that idea of me wanting to do half metal and wood aspect, but I never got into that. So I actually just converted this to its own panel and then ran some dedicated circuits through that. When you're running the shot back, fans, TV, and then some table saw, you trip breakers naturally. I don't know why, but you trip breakers when you run everything at the same time. So that was just a way for me to liberate power. 
Here's the big two car garage. This is kind of the 3D model, kind of really close to what I did. Workout zone, cabinetry on the side. I, I intended to do the same thing on the other side, but we didn't stay there long enough to do so. So I wanted like a workout zone and then just kind of showing off the, the flag area. But I had this really, really nice steel bench, solid steel. So what I did is just framed it out. I made it look like a cabinet, put doors on it. Um, and then this is the cabinets I installed on the wall, build them the exact same way as all my cabinets, really efficient, strong and cheap. And then I want to point out that notch. This notch is because at the time I had my Silverado and whether I backed in my truck or parked my truck forward, that was an anticipate door swing. So customizing your stuff, you can kind of factor in all these little details that you wouldn't think about. And then there's the cabinet all dressed up with doors and hidden storage. And then this is me packing up. This is the last hurrah of the shop. I was playing around with the idea of dressing up the cabinets. You see, I did these little face frames and all that is is scrap particle board that I cut into two inch strips and I just framed it out and I was going to do the rest of them. Uh, I just didn't have time, but there's those things just because you're using particle board doesn't mean it has to look cheap. You could do this, throw some latex on there and then like, you're going to have a really good, strong foundational or uh, functional garage. So what else are we seeing here before we move on to the next video? You see my storage racks. Um, I had just ran a two by four strip for my uh, clamps, my clamp stuff. And then I had the really low quality cardboard style pegboard, but then you can cut that to whatever size you want and use that as your backsplash. Um, that's the idea of keeping everything up and off, off the work surface. The great, like, the functionality between working here, working there, pulling the table up, it posed a lot of opportunities. I think what I was going to do on these was do a chalk paint or that whiteboard. You can go buy, it's like an eighth inch thick whiteboard. One side's, one side's white, one side's the chalkboard. And I was gonna attach that there so I could do some like sweet 3D sketches or notes or whatever else and have kind of like a graffiti art design on the upper cabinets. So that was a goal. So just throwing that out there like for ideas. Um, and then we need to talk about paint booth. So let's go into this side of it. Bam. Paint booth. This is just a picture of some stuff I had done over the course of the week. And this is me being a dork like usual, sweeping it all up. I'm gonna go through just showing off how messy these fans are because I just want to show you how gross this is. These filters, or anytime you do this, you gotta think about filtration because look at all that nasty crap that's going in your lungs. So let's zoom past here. All right, so when you're doing a paint booth, the easiest thing to do is drop cloths, these plastic ones. Great thing with plastic is that it has a natural static cling to it. So once you put it up, the airborne particles kind of attached to it. Um, so this is one by two, the cheap wood that you would buy in a bundle. And I just kind of brad nailed it to the ceiling. I used the support blocks first, brad nailed them to the side, and then I bought a bundle of those spring loaded clamps. And bada boom, bada bing. It's bada bing, bada boom, but there's a song by Danger Doom that has that in there. So where we go here, where we go? Time lapse, putting everything away basically is what you're saying. And it's just as simply as climb up, clamp it down, and then it was tall enough to hit the ceiling and then it draped right over the cabinets. So the cabinets themselves, I was able to maintain a work surface to put the paint cans and mix and all that stuff and then not have to worry about it getting anywhere. And then, of course, you'd get some overspray on the floor, but that was all part of the process of not giving a you know what word. So, the. Da, da, da. This is a little thing I built. The garage door sits on top, has filtration on the just removable filters, and the fan would come ideally in the front on the outside so that way you're pulling all the nastiness towards you and the fan stays clean. But I had, these garbage fans. So I had one fan on the inside, 
So I had a filtration fan and I put another piece of filtration on the other side, so dual layers, and then that grabbed, I would say, 80% of the airborne particles and brought them to there. And then it would rest on the floor a little bit and then but it was enough to just sweep up and then uh, clean up. So that's the basics of the shop booth. Now when you're painting stuff too, the risk of doing it outside is you can get this great finish, but then that, that little devil bug will land right on there or a leaf or something else and you have to pull it off and then you're buffing it and stuff. If you do this all within here behind the closed door, you don't have to worry about anything uh, messing up your finish. So an enclosed space like this is really useful. So let's see what else I have in store for you guys. You can kind of see all the paint that clung to the plastic here and my billions of cans. So, oh, see how the ceiling's nice and spick and span. So, there's the filters. You can tell they did their job. Now, let's go back to our, let's go back to our video here. Mm -hmm. ba -ba -ba. Actually, we'll go to this. So, bonus material here. What I added was a ledge on the top and the goal was all of the totes storage you have, um, whether that's the fall, um, Christmas, whatever. All that stuff could stash on top. And I know you can go and buy those racks that go from the ceiling, but this is just bonus. It's free, free real estate to put storage. So it was like a dual purpose storage up there, functionality up here. I had a lot of my automotive uh, chemicals up there away from uh, hands that you don't want to touch and then I ended up putting handles on these as well um, in the process but that kind of concludes the custom aspect I think I got I think I went over everything I needed to go over so the final result is the reason I was saying I don't think I'll do this design again and that is just because I'm much more lazy now <laughs> than I was then I don't know if it's being a dad, I don't know if it's working a crazy amount of time uh, doing multiple different businesses, but it just seems like if I can go and buy it and just put it together, I could reserve some brain power for other more important things. <laughs> but like I said, I love this, no regrets on this. Um, the second garage is definitely the engineering mastermind. Um, that all-in-one unit was a massive engineering feat, the CNC workstation, um, all the modular stuff. So that's the next video coming up. That's gonna be really cool. And then once we get past that, then we go into this garage and I go through the build and design and there's a lot of hidden things that you don't even know about. That's gonna be a really cool reveal. So this garage, it's kind of the same networking aspect that I'm gonna go with except I'm reaching more catalog. I'm reaching more, you have to analyze, is the juice worth the squeeze? Yes, you can build custom things, but after you analyze the markup on the cost, your time, hoping that you measure things right, not taking account of rework, not taking account of being in someone else's way or your own way, there's a lot of other variables where this is, you, you know exactly the dimensions from the store, you know exactly the cost, you know exactly uh, you can have it delivered to your house. There's a lot of pros to that. And then this is an investment. And I know investment's not a great word because it's something that's supposed to return a value. But the way I look at it as these cabinets now can be moved with me with whatever, whatever house I want. So I'm not having to regenerate costs of these cabinets again. So. Having said that, I hope you guys enjoy this. And if you have any questions or comments, hit me up, I'll respond. I do want to actually mention the cost of this. If you're wanting to stay in the realm of MDF or particle board, which is perfectly fine, you can expect to pay for that little third car garage. I'm gonna kind of ballpark you around $1,000. And that's gonna be enough to do base cabinets on two small walls and then upper cabinets. Or um, on a big garage, you could probably do one full wall. 
And the reason I'm saying a thousand is because I wanted to include handles, hinges, I want to include uh, maybe the pegboard stuff, and then kind of complete it, right? Not the tools, but the whole structure system. I wanted to be able to complete that in about a thousand dollars is gonna get you there. And then outside of that, I would recommend uh, I'm going I'm going beyond the video here. This is just bonus stuff. Is when you're developing your business, and this is something that is in the woodworking realm or anything like that, is I would structure this and scale with it because I don't believe in going into debt and all this stuff you can plan for. So you ought to invest in a job, get the job and maybe pre-orders for a couple new jobs, do those jobs and then pocket maybe 50%, invest back into your business and then build upper cabinets. And then later on build a folding table or whatever else, like keep it growing with your income. Don't focus on, man, I need a thousand bu bucks to do this all at once. If you have 200 bucks, then just build yourself a table on wheels and then figure that into the system or go, you know, just be clever. You don't have to go balls in and do the whole thing right off the get-go. So, um, I'm getting tired from talking. I'm sure you're tired of listening. So, I'm going to log off. I really appreciate you guys. Next video is going to be really, really cool. If you have any, uh, again, I already talked about comments, but I do want to make this funny thing is, I believe in freedom of speech. So if you guys have any negative comments, I will allow one negative comment per household and then do not abuse that privilege because I will just delete you. So, but I want you to feel free. If there's something in here that I, you didn't like or you thought was dumb, it's okay. You could just say it and then I could continue dialogue with you. I'm, I'm cool with that. Um, I'm not going to be, yeah. This is an open place. I want this to be a community feed that a lot of people are getting great data and feed off one another. And then maybe it will stimulate another video, another subject. So having said that, I am done. See you guys. Peace out. Do this. In a world where kids can't go to school, wise work from home, men has no place to hide. A hero is born to build a sanctuary. 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 <laughs> What's up, guys? I hope you enjoyed that.